Okay guys, well I've decided that I will do a series of videos and all of the diagrams that I've been making for the group I will actually bring to video and then I can actually go through the diagrams and explain in the video what I can't actually do when I'm posting in Facebook because when you're actually posting in Word you can only really relay so much information it's a lot easier for me to actually do the videos and just talk about all of the symbolism and show you rather than speak to you in word because symbolism really is a visual language so it really is about looking at the visuals and learning how to decode the visuals because that's what these videos are actually designed for so that you can actually go off and look at any artwork any painting, any occult alchemy diagram and understand it for yourself. Look at all of the symbols and understand what they relate to. But until you understand the true context of all of the symbols and what they relate to, you're not going to really be able to understand any of those alchemy diagrams and you're going to only look at them on the physical exterior that everybody else looks at them. And so when we actually understand the teachings, we are penetrating through that surface layer that most people will stop at. They don't have the intellectual understanding or ability or willpower because that's really what it comes down to, the will to want to seek knowledge. That must be your motivating factor, the will to want to seek truth. That always should be what motivates you. And so if you don't have that, if you're just happy to listen to whatever sounds good, because you can't be bothered going and doing the seeking yourself and having an understanding for this yourself, then you really are never going to penetrate through to the real truth beneath all of the occult symbolism, all of the paintings, all of the mythology, all of the artworks and these statues and the pyramids, it's all about the same thing. It's all about the divine race within mankind because they are who left the information and knowledge. They are who built the civilizations. There was no alien factor. Mankind illuminates and has an understanding for divine knowledge and has access to divine abilities and skills at certain parts of the cycle and divine man more so even mortal man that passes through into the beginning of the cycle will have some heightened skills and abilities rather than what we have access to in physicality at the end of the cycle when there's no ether and this is why we have to understand the science and we have to also understand the element of ether and so to, to get a true really in-depth understanding of all of this information so it, it is actually processed at the level that it should be you really have to understand all of the other interlocking aspects like the science the ether the cycle of the great year this type of knowledge isn't something you can just consume in half an hour this is something you have to spend your life understanding this is why the hermit is the number nine card and it's number nine and people know that the number nine is such a sacred number it's written everywhere how nine is one of the most important numbers but then you see that it's attached to the hermit card and a lot of people are probably puzzled why that number is attached to the hermit and that's because for you to get back to the crown and walk that path you have to become the hermit and you have to become the seeker the individual seeker for the truth and you are listening to your intuition over all else you are listening to what the information is showing you over all else you must be prepared to let go of all else other than what the information is showing you and actually process it on that level and actually experience it on that level. It's no good looking at the mystical information and knowledge and the ethereal information and knowledge if you're not actually experiencing it on that level and you're still requiring everything to be confirmed in the physical for you. Some things are never going to be confirmed in the physical. They're only ever going to be felt on that 
instinctive level, that intuitive level. But you'll soon see that it plays out to be correct. And the more that you see that that happens and you can trust your intuition and your instincts, the more you trust it and the, the stronger and you know more capable of using these skills you become, which is where we're heading. And so because we just don't have access to this environment yet of the ether where our thoughts and consciousness are just more streamlined and in harmony and because we are back in our element, the true element of Mother Earth and how we exist as a species is in the ether. And that's why you have sayings like, I feel out of my element. Okay, these sayings come from somewhere. They are embedded in our psyche for a reason. And it's so that we can remember them again when the time of us, you know, waking up to who we are again returns. Because we know when we are relaying this information in a state of higher consciousness that we're going to need to decode this ourselves again when we awaken. And so this is what's happening. We're experiencing this awakening. And I suppose those that are more connected to their divinity are the ones that awaken first. And it explains why some people are awake sooner than others. But if you are someone that has awakened first, then you do have a responsibility to light the way for others that choose to want to come along that path of knowledge seeking. If they don't, that's why you just lay it at their door and you say, well, it's here. If you do want to seek, it is here. And that's all you can do. And so that's all I do and that's all I see myself as. It's just someone that's accessing all of this different information because I'm connecting these pieces all together, which is really what I'm doing. I'm just taking these pieces that have been separated and basically where Rome has tried to destroy our story and just piecing the puzzle of who we are again back together. But you have to look at all of the different aspects. You can't just stop at one area and then not delve any deeper because then you won't actually uncover the truth. You have to keep going and going until you see what the full truth relays and reveals, no matter what that truth is, no matter if that truth seems completely against all the understanding and teachings you've had previously. But when you actually look at what you have learned previously, it's been information from the establishment which is run by Rome so they have taken away the spiritual and ethereal aspect of mankind and just brought it down to science which is why I call their priests the white coat priests as well they've like broken into two areas because remember the person that gave us the big bang theory was a catholic priest okay he was a catholic priest who was a professor go and have a look at you know that information you can find it out and once you understand that they've covered all their bases so we're completely ignorant to this other ethereal side of our nature and this is the side that counts. This is the side that also has a cycle, a larger cycle. And this is the side that we can find our power in, which is why they've taken it away. Because we can find out just who we are and how we don't answer to a system that is corrupt like the one that Rome is running. But because nobody understands any more depth to what Rome is showing, they're happy to just go along with the program and live in their servitude, going to work, paying their taxes and destroying the planet while they do it and destroying themselves. And so, these videos will basically be of these diagrams and then as I said I can go through all the information and um, give more of a deeper understanding to it. Now this diagram I've only just made because I've only just found this information here and I just found it interesting that these ancient philosophers, Philochorus and uh, Cledemus, say that the ancestral laws of the Athenian devotees, um, they devoted the 18th and 19th of each month to purifications and apotropiac rituals. And I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing those right. I always get my pronunciation, 
pronunciations wrong and I can't even pronounce the word pronunciation so you'll have to excuse me my videos are not going to be perfectly relayed like a lecturer in Yale and he gets everything right and he gets all of his punctuation no I just put the information out in the best way I can and I'm not really good at pronouncing some names and sometimes I get words mixed up and I'll say the wrong thing it's just the way I roll so that's why it actually pays for you to go and investigate everything that I'm relaying here and you can do that and that's what I encourage because really to be a true seeker you have to do that you have to actually make it have an understanding within you not just rely on my word not just rely on me telling you you have to actually go and see that for yourself so you consciously understand yes that is correct yes that does sit true with the laws of science and nature as I know them you know etc so it goes on to say that the 18th and 19th of the month were important, okay? And when I saw purifications and the 19th, I realized that there's a connection to the tarot. And so we have to start seeing the tarot. And I know most of the students in the group know how important the tarot is as a tool. But I think a lot of people actually just see the tarot as a divination tool and something that's not really looked at with much importance in the history and um, symbolic language of mankind and this is completely incorrect because the tarot is one of the main core ways to learn symbolism and to learn the language of symbolism and the major arcana are basically our cycle our creation and even the cycle that we go through and the rebirth at the end with card 21 it's all there in the major arcana and we've left this for ourselves to decode when we started having an understanding for it again which is when the ether comes back and as I said these two days the 18th and 19th we've got a connection to the ether which is the moon is connected to the ether and also the divine female and the sun is connected to the card 19 which is the purification card of the physical as well because the sun's more of our physical nature but we go through a purification where just before judgment and judgment is basically just when we ethereally ascend once again to source and we move through intermediate consciousness on our way back to source and during that time the light we've, we've carried within us as a soul as an ethereal being can be measured on some level and the ones that cannot make it through that intermediate consciousness to back to source are discarded and they are wiped and sent their energy is sent back to Atum, the, the galactic core which you can think of as our grandfather and uh, they're used for all the nebula once again which the Orion is only one nebula that is creating an experience on terra firma um, and there'd be other you know nebula doing the same and so basically that's where all of the energy will return to to be used again by the nebula to create consciousness or conscious souls once again because remember we've got a car and a bar so when you understand the soul we've got a car soul and we've got a consciousness part to our soul which is the bar which is located at the third eye or the pineal gland and basically when we are going through the end of the cycle as an ethereal soul if we are not deemed worthy in weight okay if we haven't passed weighing and measuring and the consciousness, you know, the, the universal consciousness decides that we do not have creation as something that is conducive to our heart and soul, then our bar part of our soul, our consciousness part of our soul is wiped, so that no longer exists. But the energy part of our soul, our car, which the consciousness resided in, is actually then returned back to a tomb. And so this also shows you that energy isn't actually destroyed, but it's just the essence of that energy is no longer there because that essence, that, that being that was created was not actually partaking in creation for creation to flourish. And really that's why I say that's what creation is about. It's about flourishing and it's about perfection and whether people think that that's not fair or... Um, cruel it's really just nature and it's just like I like to see it as when you see the little sea turtles running down to the beach to, to go back into the ocean after they've just been hatched and not all of them will make it you know and it's just nature it's not 
it's not evil it's not good it's just nature and that's what everything is you can't look at anything as truly being evil or good and even hermetics tells you that everything is just a different degree so this is why we go into a time of physicality in the cycle and it brings out a negative aspect in mankind as well because that's what creation does experience everything in the positive and the negative the yin and the yang so we're moving back into a time of the positive again of the ether of it returning to natural law how it should be and so this is what this cycle exists in infinitely and as I said all of this information is all about the divine race in mankind because they are the archetype of all mankind because mortal men are a extension of divine man and so everything that is left within the knowledge about divine man just automatically relays to mortal man and this is really what the divine tribes do in the height of the cycle they become teachers and philosophers because they become illuminated knowledge givers and I actually thought of something the other day where that is basically what happens and this is why they're called the apostles and the um, prophets is because basically they just relay information they know and because they're illuminated and they actually physically are illuminated people know that they are the direct extension of divine creator so they can be listened to and respected and they are respected and uh, so this is what their role is because mankind are basically their children and you know the gods are the guides for mankind and they only want each other's you know best intention at the height of the cycle you know as the illumination wanes as we go down the 26,000 year cycle and we hit the silver gate and then that's when all the cataclysms happen with Atlantis and we lose all of our knowledge and most of the information from the golden age is lost when we go through the silver gate and then once we start going through that time we still do have some um, difference between the divine and mankind because the divine still do keep some of their abilities and so those that do want to follow the right path will remain you know um, devoted to the divine race because they know that that's the true path but then as the divine race get to about 5,000 years before the end of the cycle it seems to be that their illumination fully just um, is not there anymore and they have to rely on just the goodness of mankind to believe that that's the truth and that that's the way they should go and then of course as they continue down into physicality then we've got the darker nature of mankind coming out and then we actually see them using gold for um, a way to have power and domination over others and then money comes into it and then they can buy their crowns and buy their power which is where we're now so it's going to go back to that time again where the false illusion is no longer relevant because it won't be sustained this is where we are now and that's why they're imploding everything themselves um, the economies are all being imploded now too because they know that this is all just a big circus act and they've just it's really just like a train on autopilot now going for the cliff and they've jumped off and um, everyone's in the train still and they're all talking to each other and laughing and on their iPods and their iPhones on Facebook and they don't even know that there's like the bridge is out and um, they're going for the cliff and the ones that have jumped out the you know ones that have broken the bridge are laughing just laughing at the ones on the train that have no clue to where they're going to where they're heading that could that completely think that there's someone driving the train and they're completely safe and this is just really where mankind goes wrong and so if you're smart enough to find this knowledge and really start paying attention to it and using your intellect again to find the truth then you can consider yourselves one of the lucky ones because most are going to be blindsided most disbelieve the program most just are completely sucked into the matrix I find that television is really good for sucking people into the matrix and if you're watching any of it then you really I would not bother with this knowledge at all um, you really have to completely extract yourself from Rome's illusion on all levels and you have to immerse yourself in the truth once again 
That's the only way you're going to unlock the inner kingdom. And if the will is there, as I said, it comes down to will. It comes down to you wanting it. If you don't want it, then, you know, creation's not going to support it. So just know that, you know, and you're going to want to hope that you're divine and that you just come through or that you're one of the elect because there's 10,000 uh, in the mortals elect that come through that are connected to the divine race as an anchor. They're their kin and their, their friends and family and uh, this is also shown in the information that I'll be bringing as well. And so unless if you want to take the chance um, that you are going to be okay, then that's fine. But if you, you know, aren't, then it says in scripture that if you have an understanding for this information, the Gospel of Thomas says, anyone that who has an understanding for this information will not taste death. And that's because your consciousness is weighed and measured at that time and knows that you have an understanding for who you are and your responsibility in creation and your responsibility to protect it and to protect your divinity. And that can be tested. See, people don't understand that that can be tested because they've only ever known a physical cycle and this is the problem. They don't realise that we're in an ethereal cycle too. And so when we are actually just before we go through judgment, and it even supports this in plenty of scripture, that the soul is purified and, uh, you know, we're brought through into a new cycle like children, like innocent children once again, because really we are the creator's children, all of us, and the divine race more so are the creator's you know, absolute seed and children. And so he brings them back into the new cycle with their family and friends to start again, to start another experience for him because he experiences everything through um, all of us, you know, through creation. And so this is how it starts again. And this is why I think that the um, sand mandalas that the Buddhists do are really helpful in visualising that because you can actually understand how they are actually even showing the four directions, meaning the four races within divine man. And then they take their time over months and months to make these beautiful, intricate designs. And then at the end of it, they wipe the slate clean and they are basically showing you the, the symbolism for what happens with mankind. We flourish, we create, and all of this is on a conscious ethereal level. And then at the end of that, it's like the boards wipe clean for us to start again. And next time it'll be, we'll have the same rules and the same basic um, points of similarity to every cycle because it always has to follow law and, and there's always got to be something core that everything's built upon. But the experiences won't be exactly the same. They will have differences. And this just goes on eternally. So... This was really good to see this confirmation and to see that, yes, it's just more of a confirmation that tarot cards are important. So if you really do want to have an understanding for the cycle we're in and the understanding for the main archetypal symbols that you'll find everywhere, then you really want to learn the tarot for how it is also meant to be used. Because even though it is a divination tool, first and foremost, it was created as code for the divine race to once again start decoding and having an understanding for when the time of the cycle was upon us again. And so what people have to do is penetrate beneath the outer layer now of all of these symbols and not only focus on the only area that we've ever seen them in because that's the area that Rome have wanted us to view them in. They would not have liked the information of the tarot surfacing. And this is where it shows me too with all of this information we have with alchemy and the tarot and the Kabbalah tree of life that there is a brotherhood out there that were like the Freemasons that haven't turned against the divine race and they are actually putting this information out there and they are very powerful too. And there's even information that you can find about the divine race in songs and in poems and it's just been put out in commissioned artworks. So there is definitely an element there that has not forgotten the importance of keeping the knowledge intact and relaying the knowledge so that when the time's right, the people that can understand the knowledge um, 
start actually understanding the knowledge again. And it's not only the divine race that understand this knowledge, because as I said, there are people that are created close to source, close to the divine race. There are souls that are, are the extension that are also illuminating. And because they're all consciously different, they're not going to all understand this information at the same time, regardless of how connected to source they are. There are going to be some that are trapped in the illusion more than others just because they're consciously different and they've experienced things that have kept them locked down in that physicality. So everyone's on a different level, but we're all able to access our divinity. All of us, we've all got that pathway available to us because everything's destined. We're given a certain amount of, you know, destined paths and doors that we can take. The information shows that there's 64 paths that can be taken at every point in time. If you're at zero point, you've got 64 doors available to you at every point to get to from where you are to the end of the cycle. And this is how we all interact. This is why we see the checkerboard and we see this in a lot of the alchemy um, diagrams from Kircher and this is what it actually is so everyone has this path this ability to, to make their way back to source and take the right path take the path of the hermit but the problem is is not everybody does not not everybody recognizes those doors that are available to them and this is why you need the knowledge because then it helps you recognize those doors and take the right path. And I mean, some things are fated. You're just not going to be able to avoid some things. But for the most part, if you do make good decisions based on, you know, good conscious choices because you have an understanding for the environment that you're existing within, you're going to have a lot better chance of seeing through this time with little to no real physical negative experiences. And even scripture says that, even the Hopi prophecy says that, you know, those that remember the original teachings will, you know, basically be able to move through these times without, you know, really feeling them in a negative way. I mean, I'm not saying that emotionally and um, on other levels, you know, everyone's experiencing difficulties, but some people are in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know, and they get involved in, situations that are negative and results normally in a lot of pain and suffering and most times death. So the information shows we've got all the doors there. Everyone's, a, you know, got a way back to their divinity. Everyone's got the ability to illuminate to, you know, um, the best level they can reach. And this is why there's this definition between the iron and the iron and clay man, because as I said, there's an elect within um, the mortals. And they also illuminate. They may not illuminate on the level of the divine race, but there are a elect within the mortals that will access their divinity. You know, this is what the information is showing. So basically... That's all I can do is just relay what I'm seeing. Um, sometimes I have to intuitively join the dots, but then normally I find confirmation later or somebody hears the video and then hears what I've said and then sends me something um, to show me that, yes, that was right, because normally I just go with the most logical explanation and that always tends to be true, which is why if you follow Occam's, lasers, uh, Occam's Razor's Law, you should go okay when you are looking for truth because it brings everything down to a very simplistic common denominator, common denominator. If you can bring everything down to a simplistic common denominator and explanation, then you're on the right track because even Einstein said that nature is simple but no simpler, you know, and you should keep it simple but no simpler. And so once you do that, you can actually use your intuition to, you know, connect some dots before more information comes along. But as I've always said, this is a an unveiling of information where you go through the layers and this is how you put it back together again and we're we're all able to do this so this is why it's important to have an understanding for all of the tarot cards watch the mystery teachings because as I'm bringing more of these diagrams and I'm speaking more in this way and I'm actually speaking in a way with this information as though I'm directing it at students that do have a good understanding for the knowledge so if you do want to understand on that level, you will have to go back to the mystery teachings. 
watch it from the beginning and as I said you're going to have to weigh and measure it for yourself on your own consciousness and your own on your own soul you know basically that's what it takes that's what being a seeker being an initiate um, being a mystic it, it's all about you doing it yourself and you not requiring other people to confirm anything it's all about you and what truth means to you and trusting that because that's really where it comes down to trust and the intuition requires the trust it just there's no other way to move through your heart and to move through into the ether without relying on your heart and what it's telling you and your intuition you just have to do it and most people that's where the problem comes and I suppose that's why you know you have the whole weighing of the heart ceremony that's really focused on and the heart symbolism because it is a gate that isn't easy to remove all of your programming and your walls that you've built and your shields to actually trust what your gut's telling you and what your heart's telling you and what the information's telling you and go with what you're actually seeing in this side of the information which isn't the side you're going to find at Yale and being discussed by modern day archaeologists you know and even people like Graham Hancock and all of that group are still relying a lot on these modern day archaeologists all they're doing is debating with the time frame of when the Sphinx and the pyramids were built they're saying that there was a cataclysm halfway through the cycle yes there was so I do like how they do put out some of the information and show us that there are some confirmations in what we already know. And yes, that's the silver gate, basically, when the cataclysm happen and we're shaken out of our um, situation where we were living probably um, too indulgently by that time and we had to be shaken through the silver gate and then everything gets resorted um, and gets dispersed and scattered again and we have to rebuild and then move down the rest of the cycle and so basically you'll find half truths there but they still look at the ancient Egyptians as though there's some civilization in the past and we're never going to be able to understand them and it's all a mystery and it's all about consciousness and you know, even the other day I saw Graham Hancock saying something about the information where scientists are now saying they have to accept a creator and he's saying, oh, it's a, a spiritual energy. You know, they always want to dilute the creator and dilute God. And so as soon as you are allowing them to dilute God and the creator and bring it down to just this, you know, spiritual conscious energy, then you're actually taking away from mankind's divinity and taking away from your own divinity. Because you are part of the creator, so anytime they dilute the creator and take the creator and God out of the picture, then they're taking your divinity and your attachment to and that connection to divinity out of the picture. And so that's what you want to find again and put back in the picture because that's what Rome has locked up in the Vatican. And I don't see anybody actually going down there and getting back any of that information so it's just going to be what we can find scattered left from what they've actually tried to destroy but as I said because all the information is about the divine race and it's just everywhere they've just had to pretty much wipe out our memory completely and they've not been able to do that so with what's left of our memory we can piece it back together but you just have to start seeing it in the right context because if you don't then it's just not going to actually fit all together but you can tell that once you start seeing it in the right context it just all starts fitting together and the symbols just all start making sense and the language just starts making sense and so this is where you want to be so that when I am bringing you more of these diagrams that I'm finding and that I have done throughout the last year um, you can really tap in to what the ancients were telling us on the level that it should be viewed and interpreted and decoded and that's why I really do love this uh, quote from John Dominic Crossan who's a historian 
And he says, my point once again is not that those ancient people told literal stories and we are now smart enough to take them symbolically, but that they told them symbolically and we are now dumb enough to take them literally. And so this is basically what we have to start understanding, the symbolism, how it was actually relayed, not how Rome and how unconscious mortal man is trying to interpret this symbolism on a literal level, which is what I see Graham Hancock doing with this symbolism. They all want to bring it to this strange civilization they can't understand and perhaps it came from another planet. You know, they just want to take away the greatness within mankind and attribute it to something else because they can't understand the information. Not sure whether that's the full story, but anyone that's following that information without actually looking at any other information as well, you really are missing out on a lot of the story because they just are not delving deep enough into all the symbolism. They're not trying to bring all of the symbolism together enough. And this is why the Kabbalah Tree of Life is also really important. And this is another very important tool that's been left to help us decode. And you use that with the tarot. This way we get a true understanding of the knowledge and the information. And we don't need to rely on Yale and people that tell us they are intellectual and intelligent enough to have an understanding for truth. We really have to just bring it back to our own understanding of truth and have a trust in that again because that's why they've designed universities like Yale and all of those other ones with such a prestigious exterior and appearance and that anyone that's connected to them, Princeton and all of these names is just automatically credible. I mean, this is just all part of the programming and to keep you away from your divinity and to keep you locked into their storyline just of physicality. I mean, you could just imagine if some of these philosophers started talking at these universities and started bringing in God, I mean, it just would not be able to, you know, sit with the way they process information anymore because to them, man is God now. Man is the most intellectual. Man has risen above creation and his own creator in the minds of mortal man and this is what these educational institutions just keep, you know, implanting in the psyche and consciousness of unconscious man to keep him down there. And he thinks because he has a piece of paper from one of these institutions that that, you know, makes him an intellectual. And he doesn't understand that really the truth is still, you know, eluding him. Okay, well, I'll leave it here. I think that was a, a good video to start for the first diagram. And I'll try to just keep bringing the information as it flows. And so sometimes these videos might be short and sometimes these videos might be longer depending on how much information... Um, I can attribute to them and talk about with them and um, yeah so I'll just leave that there and um, as I said I'll just begin to just do these diagrams um, every few days probably do a video um, or if I find something uh, interesting uh, do a video and just uh, start actually explaining them in more depth. So I hope you've enjoyed that and um, as always peace out.